So I um, changed the title a little bit. Um, I'm not going to talk about so much on biodiversity today, but uh, on the on the role of uh, pest insects and uh, a bit about diseases and the future changes that are in front of us. So I'm uh, visiting from another uh, CBC funded project. Uh, we have a project called InnoForest View where we have been trying to test innovative uh, ways to uh, tackle different forest damages. First about the future changes. I think many of uh, you are very uh, aware what's going to possibly happen in the future. So uh, there was a very good review in global change biology just some years ago, just maybe a year ago. Yeah, it was last year. And uh, um, so that summarizes well what is likely going to happen to our forests. First of all, of course, the temperatures are going to rise. Uh, it means that we will have uh, longer growing seasons and uh, we will lose most of, most of the time when we have our soil frozen. Uh, precipitation will increase mainly on winter time, I guess. And still, uh, uh, even with the increased precipitation, the dryness will also increase uh, because of the enhanced evaporation. And this is going to occur uh, during spring and early summer. So uh, insects and diseases. So if uh, uh, one thinks about them, they are a bit different. And a rule of thumb, for me at least, is that insects will always benefit from warming in our latitudes. But diseases uh, that are on, on the shoots or needles or leaves on our, of our trees, they actually won't benefit. Uh, the dry spring and dry uh, early summer are not good for them. And um, but but this is not always so black and white. So there are differences. And of course, these uh, changes, um, they affect also these diseases and insects via, uh, via host trees. And we shouldn't forget about the, tri tri the third trophic level. So the natural enemies are also affected. And of course, the forest structure that we have, the mosaic of different stands in the landscape is also important. I will mainly focus on uh, on the most important uh, um, insect in spruce, spruce bark beetle. So um, it's a good example of an insect that will benefit from from the climate change. First of all, it, its development rate will increase as the summers are warmer, and as the growing season is longer they will have time to produce two generations in the future uh, up till middle of Finland. And uh, the population dynamics are heavily influenced by the host trees. They are so dependent on them that the conditions that affect the host trees have a huge impact on the on the spruce bark beetle. And uh, Drought, uh, especially severe drought, will uh, lower the resin defenses of spruce trees and makes them more suitable. The beetle also carries a blue stain fungi with it that aids in uh, sort of uh, tackling the, uh, the colonization of a tree. So also the blue stain fungi may be influenced in some way. But from the spruce bark beetle, let's check what's the uh, as important, uh, the, which are the as important species uh, of fungi that we have. And they are the root rot causing heteropasidium fungi, anosum and parviporum. So uh, this is a fungi that is going to benefit from the climate warming. 
it's not as sensitive to dryness as as some other diseases because um, it it inhabits the soil. So uh, increasing temperatures and longer growing seasons will aid the sporulation, and of course also the mycensal uh, mycelia growth will uh, increase when it's warmer. And in addition, because of the uh, lack of the soil frost, there will be more damages to the trees uh, during logging operations, for instance, and that gives uh, sites for infection more often than nowadays. So both of these species are uh, expected to in extend the range. So there is a connection back to the spruce bark beetle. Spruce um, is a native tree, and uh, but it has shallow roots. And if there is a lack of soil frost and also increased incidence of root rot, it means that spruce are more prone to wind damage than earlier. And increased precipitation in the future uh, in the eastern and northern parts, uh, in the winter time, it will still be snow, and that will increase the snow damage risk, causing stem breakage, bending of trees, and also uprooting. And all these wind damage stems and these snow damage stems of spruce are a good host material for spruce bark, bark beetle reproduction. So in other, uh, other, in other words, uh, spruce bark beetle benefits directly from the warming, from the, uh, um, from the increased amount of host material and also the lower level of resin defenses. So there are three different factors. Um, I would say that in Finland, uh, spruce bark beetle is always at endemic densities. You have all heard probably the news from Central Europe and also in Sweden that there has been really serious epidemics of spruce bark beetle. I don't want to um, tell more about the background of those now, but uh, concentrate on Finland and also on our cross-border region. So, uh, at at the current climate, what mainly happens is that um, there is a wind throw somewhere and uh, uh, spruce bark beetles uh, infest the uh, fallen down stems and they reproduce in them and then they become abundant enough to be able to attack the nearby trees that may be very in good, maybe in good health. So, um, this is the way how we get small infestations, small local infestations. And this is how we want to keep them in forestry. Uh, our institute and um, Metsäkeskus Forest Central uh, is um, collaborating and we have a, a pheromone trap monitoring program for spruce bark beetle to, to know where they are and how abundant they are. Here is a, a graph on the left that shows the uh, summer thunderstorm event that is visible on, on a satellite image. Uh, and that occurred in 2010. It was also a warm year and that event or those events uh, um, made the scientists to start this uh, system, relatively systematic monitoring program of uh, spruce bark beetle. On the right, you see the map, and there are blue dots. Those are sort of the the monitoring sites that we used to have, but now we are taking uh, the future into consideration. So the red dots are now representing new sites that we are going to be monitoring 
or we are monitoring actually this summer. Next week we will have our first results. And on the photo you will see how these uh, traps are set up. There is a three uh, uh, sort of drain pipe traps uh, that are established some 20 meters from the from a very sunny forest edge on a fresh clear-cut area of the spruce. So in forestry, uh, we would like to keep the spruce bark beetle populations low so that they wouldn't go and uh, infest uh, healthy trees. This is uh, um, controlled by the Forest Damages Prevention Act in Finland. It's being currently renewed, but uh, the main uh, information there is how to prevent spruce bark beetle and root rot uh, from spreading. So the idea is that we need to move the suitable host material from the forests. It means that all the, the spruce timber with bark uh, that has been stored need to be removed before the first generation beetles uh, mature and emerge. Damage trees as well, and also freshly attack trees by southern pine beetle, spruce bark beetle, excuse me. And uh, um, it's a tricky thing to find a tree like that. Uh, here you can see this brown dust on the on the uh, at the bottom of the of a standing tree. And it's quite tedious to go and look, search for that. So we would need more uh, methods how to do that more easily. So uh, for some years there has been uh, active uh, research on uh, remote sensing techniques uh, on how to identify uh, these uh, trees that have been attacked by spruce bark beetle. This is something that we also concentrate in our Inno Forest View project. Basically, at the endemic state, uh, the idea is to find a site that looks sort of suitable or can be guessed to be uh, a site where spruce bark beetle could be spreading. And a good guess is a sunny uh, forest edge like here, which normally results also windfalls. There one can, um, one should then uh, remove the windfall trees and then, um, then look for the infested trees. And here a small scale remote sex sensing techniques could be used. So last summer uh, we tested uh, drone and camera equipment together with Hanna Huitu, Yevgeni Lopatin and myself uh, in a one, one spruce park beetle infestation. And we also had an idea whether that uh, site could be used uh, as, a, as a, our project partners to classify some satellite images, but, but we don't really see not yet um, uh, that as a as a as an uh, option here in Finland because the the spruce bark beetle infestations are still so small. We are still at these endemic levels and our Forest Damage Prevention Act is uh, keeping the population slow. But these drones look very promising. But in the future, if we are going to also enter a more serious or epidemic state that uh, as, the, as the climate warms and uh, we will have second generation uh, almost every year and we will have these drought periods, then 
the risk for really park beetle epidemics is increased. And here it's uh, it makes sense to note that this early summer dryness is also corresponding condition to forest fires. And uh, uh, when we think about uh, um, forest fires, uh, for those we need inventory and also data on fuel loads. So in the future we will need these remote monitoring tools, more accurate ones also to, to, um, to monitor different forest damages, abiotic and biotic. And of course, from a biodiversity point, these spruce bark beetle kill trees um, could be left to the forest. And that's sometimes done, but sometimes not. Uh, forest owners want to um, salvage log often to, to try to uh, save the timber at, uh, at some cost at least. Um, but if we get these large scale, scale calamities, uh, what we have seen in Central Europe, if that's the situation after some many tens of years in Finland also, uh, it's going to also increase the fuel load. So, um, the cross-border collaboration in monitoring of uh, forest damages is important, I think. Uh, we, we both will have these abiotic and biotic damage, damage risks that are just getting higher. Uh, there will be other insects that will defoliate trees, pines and birches. And insects and diseases do not really respect borders, so the phenomena uh, will go across the borders. So large wind throw areas and snow damage areas in the vicinity of the border on either side will influence both countries. And uh, of course, uh, then there will be these new invasive alien pests that, uh, that also uh, can move. We are now expecting to get um, emerald ash borer observations in Finland uh, in the near future. Uh, we understand that it's traveling to us from the east. And finally, I would like to um, tell you about a small conference that is going to take place on Friday. Our project is going to end and we will organize a small conference and you are all welcome to join us. Thank you.